Hi everybody, my name is Spammers and welcome to Titanic Honor and Glory. This game is highly anticipated. Ever since the demo came out last year, people have been begging to see more. Well, the time has come without any more stalling. Let's begin! Welcome back to Titanic, everybody. Now, the demo starts off here at the D-Deck First Class entrance. If I do a 180, whoa, there's the whole doors that we boarded the ship through. But if you look through the window, it's daytime! Isn't that lovely? The first demo was set at night, but now it's lovely sunshine, clouds, and blue oceans. Right, turning around. Up ahead is the D-Deck reception, but before we enter it, if I look left, the curtains have been revealed. We have forward accommodation. We can't go any further. There's an invisible wall, but it's a nice little tease of what you can see in the future. Anyway, entering the D-Deck reception, we have the first class elevators or lifts. But what's this? Out of order. Apologies from the company. It's okay, but I am legit kind of excited to ride these things just to see the decks go past one by one. It's going to be neat. And of course, as you exit the lifts, you see the lovely blast plaques. D-Deck, B-Deck, C-Deck, A-Deck, all of the decks, but not Boat Deck. Anyway... And of course, on the starboard side, you have their entrance as well. And look at the sun coming through those windows. They're glowing. Oh, that is awesome. I love the sun rays. It feels alive. And of course, the shadows on the floor. Being at nighttime, you don't get to see light and shadows and stuff like that. It's nice. Now, of course, lingering over from the very first demo, this caught many people off. Oh, look at that. It's sparks. It's cute, it stays. Right. Okay, emerging back onto the D-Deck reception, you may have thought from the first demo that this room was complete and was done, but no, there are actually some minor differences. Like, if I look to the left, the piano has been moved. Moved, you say, where to? Well, the other side of the room, of course. I don't know the historical references that say the piano was here and not over there, but these guys, they don't do anything about loads of research, consultations, and double checking. So if they say it was here, my money's with them. It was right here. Now this, it's a Steinway Model B piano. These were provided to Harland de Wolf, the ship's builders, as kind of blank canvases. And the artisans at Harland de Wolf would do all of the gold inlay and design and to make them truly unique pieces of art. There were six Steinways on board. Now moving on. Some other... Chairs move! Some other differences from the original demo is the first class dining saloon. This was covered in darkness in the first demo, but now the lights are on. Probably because it's daylight outside. But look at that. Isn't it glorious? Your meal here was included with your first class tickets, and on Sundays, religious services were held within. But ever so sadly, the doors are locked. We still can't go inside. But we can peek, and that's better than nothing. More teasers to come. Now, no matter which way you turn, this room is just stunning to look at. The use of light and color is beautiful, it's divine. It is truly a first-class room. But nothing quite says first-class like the forward grand staircase. This thing's beauty and design. It's iconic. It's instantly recognizable. You could show anybody a photo of this and they would go, Hey, that's Titanic! And if they don't, they're not worth your time. Moving on from D-Deck, we're going to go down one flight to E-Deck, and while this was included on the original demo, some changes have been made, so we're going to have a peeky-poo around to see if we can spot them. Off the bat, there's one straight ahead. It's underneath the clock, and it says the clock will be set backwards at about midnight, 49 minutes. This may seem a trivial thing to include, but it's the detailing like this that's going to make this game stand out high above all the others. Now, dead ahead, we go back into first-class accommodation. Now, nothing has changed since the original demo, but with it being daylight outside, you've got all these new shadows and light coming in, so it's just a pleasure to see. Look at, oh, look at that sunbeam. Oh, the light rays. That's so cool. And the way it hit, it's, it's, it truly does feel alive. It really does. As I've walked around, you may have noticed they've added the illuminated signs. They look fantastic and they're jolly useful. I'm afraid the rumors are true. Scotland Road is closed. But not to worry, there's still plenty to see. We're going to go down to F Deck, home to the first class swimming pool and the Turkish baths. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Turkish baths were in the original demo, but something might have changed. We're going to take a peek. Look at that. It's glorious. It looks divine. The tiles to this day are still hanging on the wall. This is, in fact, the most preserved room on the entire wreck. Now, in the corner, there's a mirror. In the demo, it once said, please support us at Indiegogo. But today, here and now, it reads, please contribute to us at titanichg.com. Now, please do. Every penny you send in goes towards a brand new speed, goes towards the Titanic. Now, look at this. The doors are open. This was closed on the first demo. What could it be? Let's have a look. 
As I tepidly step towards the door, I turn to reveal the electric bath. Ta-da! If you're not sure what the electric bath is, check out this animated short from 1996. In essence, it was a box of light bulbs. You would lay down, close the lid, and the light bulbs would glow, vibrant, healing, invigorating energies, or so they believed at the time. But you have to remember, electricity was still kind of an emerging new thing. It wasn't commonplace like it is today. If anything, it's kind of like a sunbed. Sadly, this is as close as we're going to get. It is just a teaser, but a very welcoming teaser. Now, as I backtrack upstairs, I'm going to give you some Titanic trivia. The Olympic, the first of the three ships, had two electric baths on board, but they were not as popular as White Star thought they might be, so Titanic only received one. There you go. Tell your friends. They'll be shocked and amazed. Right. Moving forwards, we're going to go up to Sea Deck. This is brand new territory. In the original demo, we couldn't go here. But now we can! Check this out. Oh, doesn't that look good? It looks so good! Check this out. Here's a picture of Olympic's Sea Deck landing. Compare them side by side. Doesn't that look good? So looking at the detailing here, we have these lovely cherubs holding torches. We've got some temporary artwork in the background. But if I do a 180, we have the first class purse's office! So the purser's office was the heart of the whole passenger accommodation on board. You would come here not only to safeguard your valuable possessions like your jewellery or your money, you could send telegrams, you could see the Marconi tubes in the background. Even more so, you could hire a deck bench, you could get a steamer rug, you could buy a ticket for the Turkish bath, you need a passenger list, there should be some on the racking to the left. If you need anything, you can come here and you can get help. Now doesn't that look good? Look how the light is reflecting off the varnish of the walls. Look at these tiles of the stars. It looks so good. And the bureau in the middle of the clock. Ah, oh, the sun coming around the corner. It's beautiful. I love it so much. I would happily work and die on board this ship. Oh, and keep an eye out for Easter eggs on board. Check out the photo of Park Stevenson, one of the consultants to the game. And now, for the first time, we can get off the grand staircase and head into accommodation! Now, this is nice to see because in games and films of years past, they've always got this wrong. They've always shown a more simpler affair with, like, flatter sides, a flat ceiling, hand railing down the side, but it's always been wrong. For the first time, this is how this should have looked, all together in one place. Most notably is the ceiling. You have these nice arched curvy bits, and they contain pipes on the inside, but are hidden from view. Now, at the very far end, where are we going to go? Where are we going to come out? Well, it's the aft grand staircase! Yay! From one to another. Let's have a goosey. So the aft staircase is kind of the unsung hero of the ship. Whenever we talk about the grand staircase, we always refer to the forward staircase. While in fact, you'll see as we climb this, it's every bit as grand, if not sometimes nicer. Check this out. Let's look around the room. If I go over here, we've got the maids and valets saloon. We can't go inside, but I want you to see this once again. Oh, who's this? Who's that? It's Mads de Winkler, everybody! Now, if I look straight up, look at that. It's even more vibrant than the forwards, because we're, I guess we're closer to it. We're getting a lot more light. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That's screenshot worthy. Get that on your desktop right now. Now, what makes the aft sea deck landing so important is the barber shop. Look at that dead ahead. Brand new content, everybody. Sadly, we can't go inside. It is off limits. But look at that. The shelves are bare. It's waiting to be stocked. But we can see it. It's good. It's new content. Okay, so moving on from sea deck, we're going to head up to B deck. Look at that head bob. Blip, blip, blip. And look at this. Look at that sun. Look at all that light! Isn't that lovely? And I've never seen this particular angle before. This is something I bring up in my videos all the time. I love that in these games, in these environments, we can see things from a new angle for the very first time. And this is a first for me. In fact, I'm taking a screenshot. So check this out. I don't think you're ready for this. Have a look at that. Doesn't that look good? It's so high quality. This is what you'd expect out of a AAA studio, but these guys are indie. And this is exactly what all your donations go towards. You're funding the development of this. And really, how can you knock this? This looks amazing. It's so... It's, it's perfect. Oh, wow. Look, every angle is a photograph. Every angle is just beautiful. It's so good. It's so good. Let's go around the corner. Ah, now through here. We've got these stained glass windows here. Through that door there would be the first class smoking room. However, not today. Look, even the reflection is reflecting this room. Look! That's the detailing we're getting. That's the detailing. Wow! 
Oh, wow. You could shoot a movie in this. So either side of the A deck landing here, we have a couple of cabins. And in particular here, we have A37. It's one of only a couple we can currently explore. And look at that. Now let's move into the room. We have the wash basin with the marble topping and a Kodak VP. It's a 1911 model period and it was on board Titanic. This is the camera that Father Brown used and took some of the only photographs of Titanic during her maiden voyage. So it's really great that that's represented in the game. Now, out the window, we can see the A-deck promenade and a bit of the Atlantic. We can't get any closer because the beds and the wardrobe's in the way, damn it, and I can't jump. You have to take into consideration how difficult this is. Like, take the carpet, for example. How do they know exactly what colour it is, what pattern it was? Research, that's exactly how this is done. It'd be quite nice to stay in these cabins, but... Oh, wait, 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 wait. We have a better view of the A-deck promenade. Look at how the sun's casting those shadows. I love shadows. It's just, it's so artistic and beautiful and I love it very much. Oh, and that's equally awesome. Ah, wait, if we bob along to the other side. We have A36, which I believe was Thomas Andrew's cabin whilst on board. And look at this. To represent that, they have left deck plans. A strewn everywhere. And who's this? It's another member of the team. I'm sorry I don't know your name, but I love you all of the same. And apart from that, it's kind of a mirror image of the other side. Okay, so coming out of Andrew's room, we have this corridor to the left. If we followed this down, it would take us into the first class lounge. Sadly, not allowed. Not open. Not available. Boo! So returning to B deck, we have but two rooms remaining to visit. Coming up next is the Cafe Parisienne. Ta-da! Look at that. That is lovely. That's so good. And seeing it at daytime as well, having that light flooding through the windows, the room feels so alive. It truly does. Now, the windows are cracked down, it seems, because there's a glass panel that can go up and down. You can even see the hole where you put the crank in. <laughs> that looks so good. I love going to sea, and that is exactly why. This looks perfect. Oh, look how the rays blow bleed into the room. It is, and the clouds are moving. It's so good. It feels real. I can't wait to try this in VR. It looks... Oh, it's good. It's so good. So I don't really have a lot to say about the cafe. I mean, it's the cafe Parisian. It put on the light service. You could come here for drinks, some light food. You could sit down and have a nice relaxing evening. I mean, I would... I'd get this corner seat right here. My back against the wall. Nice sea air blowing in. I can view the whole room. It's... A very peaceful place. It's a very peaceful place. We've got another photograph. It's Tom Linsky, everybody! So leaving the cafe, we have but one last place to visit. It's down this corridor. I'll look through those windows a second. Doesn't that look good? All right, coming up, it's the Alicada restaurant. Look at this. I haven't been in here yet. In fact, in reality, I've never really explored this room. Now, this is a very special place. It's a premium. It did not come on your ticket. You had to pay to use this room. And this was made for the very top crust of society that Titanic was expecting to take. Oh, even the plates, even the chinaware and stuff in here was all custom and exclusive. Now, what you could do is, it was, it was kind of accommodating. You could decide to exclusively dine in here and they would give you a subsidy that would then give you cash back on your ticket because you wouldn't be using the main dining saloon or something like that. Um, but it's also equally interesting that White Star didn't manage or run this restaurant. They had a guy called Luigi Gatti. Now, he was a very famous, well, restaurateur, I guess the word would be. He um, was the manager of two Ritz restaurants in London and at the time he was managing... The Origins restaurant, I forget their name, but it was the best place in London at the time. And White Star poached him and he came here to take over this and he brought his own team with him and he hired them, he managed them, he paid them their wages. And of that team, there was like 26 or 27 Italians, like seven French, a couple of English. I, I, I don't know the numbers. I'm not a historian or anything. I'm just going by what I remember. But um, yeah, sadly, he didn't survive the sinking. This would be the end of him, but quite frankly, what a glorious way to go out. I mean, this is beautiful. This is divine. I think you could move these around. Oh, there's Ken Marshall. He's nearly camouflaged on that because he kind of blends in. He's one of the consultants. Very good guy. I've only spoke to him once. I don't think he liked me, but I hope he does because I think he's amazing. 
So just a couple of things come to mind that I think are relevant for this room. Number one, the wood panelling. While Titanic is gone, Olympics lives on. There's a cruise ship from uh, Celebrity Cruises called the Celebrity Millennium. And on board, it has the Olympic restaurant. And it's decked out with the panelling from Olympics Alicada restaurant. Only half of the room, but still plenty of it. And you can go dine in there. And equally, you have to pay a premium to use it. So that's very touching. And lastly, you know, Mr. Luigi Galli, his staff members, he had waiters and chefs, but he had one individual with one specific job. He was the Iceman, which I find just ironic because icebergs, Titanic, you know the connection there. He was a confectioner. He made, I'm stuck, he made ice cream and, and stuff like that. And it seems weird that he would be given the title Iceman, but you have to remember, like, refrigeration was in his infancy at the time period, so it truly was probably an art form to be able to make such desserts and tasty treats. Anyway, that about wraps up our time on board Titanic. Let me return to somewhere nice and we'll say our goodbyes. There you go, Audino's Imperial Restaurant London. That was the name. They stole him from them. Okay, that's an episode right about there. I thank you for your time for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I have played so many Titanic games. I have a whole playlist of them on my channel. There's like, what? Well, I don't know. There's too many accounts, but of all of them, this is always going to be the top of the mountain, the best of the best of the best. You can't beat this. Now, this is still only demos, demo number two. When's the full release coming out? I don't know. I don't really truly think anyone knows. You may get estimates and stuff like that, but they're, they're just estimates. The beauty behind this is that they're not rushing. They're taking their time. They're getting it right, and it is showing. Take games like Fall of the Titanic. That is trash. This... It's like a galaxy away on top of a mountain made out of solid gold inside a palace made out of marble. Other wealthy things. Anyway, we're done. So, thank you for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody.